What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Perfectly Blended Podcast, Season 5, Episode Number 2. Today, we're actually going to be talking about something super non-boring, and that's chores and responsibilities. That's coming up right now. Thank you so much for joining us on the Perfectly Blended Podcast. This podcast is for blended families, for couples that want to strengthen their marriage and want a brighter future. Perfectly Blended exists to break the stigma of divorce, drop the shame and guilt holding you back, and equip marriages to thrive instead of just survive. We believe all that is possible in this life is based on the power of Jesus Christ and his ability to restore us fully. Let's dive in. What is up, Miss Stacy? Okay, so Christy's on her phone right now. So if you're listening to this, you don't know this. Okay, but if you're on here right now, you can see Christy's on her phone because she's like, you're always calling me on the carpet. Okay, I've never heard that before. See, if you don't know Christy, Christy is trapped in a beautiful young woman's body, but inside her, she's like 130 years old. So I call them Christyisms. okay? She's always saying these things that like super old people say. Have you ever heard of you're calling me to the carpet? What's it mean? I don't know it, what it means, means to call on the carpet means to reprimand someone, to be someone summoned before one's boss or superior in order to be criticized, scolded, or blamed for some sort of mistake or infraction. Mm-hmm. Said so, by to, the cave people. To reprimand someone. <laughs> Get called to the carpet, called man. Called to the carpet. Oh, my God. I don't even know what that's supposed to like. Why, why to the carpet? Like, what's the carpet? Oh, Stacy's like, um, yeah. Stacey, <laughs> Thank you. You love Christy. You would say that anyway, you liar. <laughs> like, for real. It's just shocking. Like gams, he, you know, gams. a lot of people never Call your heard gams of gams. To the carpet. It's legs. I say gallivanting and <laughs> hoot nanny. Hoot nanny. Yes, those are all very. Don't be fun. lollygagging. All the fun old fiddle people. farting. Those are Christyisms for everybody that wants to know. So tell me, love, you got anything? F- what, hang on, wait a minute. What did Stacy say? Yes, I would, but really, I have heard that. Okay. See? All right. Getting called to the carpet. You guys are both stuck and you guys are both have old lady souls. No, what it makes me think of is like boxers. You know, you have to get called to the carpet, okay, for the weigh-in and stuff. Get called to the carpet. That's what it makes me think of. I don't think they get weighed in on carpet. Whatever. I don't know. Maybe. (laughs) Jeez. So beyond that, my love. Yes. Share us what's on your wonderful mind. So what's on my mind is the last two nights have, as many of you know, we are in the sagas of Stella. Right now. Our little Frenchie. Our little new French bulldog puppy. In the last two nights, it's been not that bad. So she's woke me up at 1.30 and then at 3. And then last night, she yeah. only woke me up at 1.30. And the reason why is because Josh had her at 3. So she woke up Josh at 3 and she wanted to lay on him. And he's like, I'm just going to try to let her lay here. Well, she moves around so much in her sleep. Yep. So... What is funny is if you're not watching this right now on video, you are going to miss out on something. Josh doesn't even know I'm going to do this, but oh my goodness. we have a doorbell that we bought for our dog and the doorbell has a little um, Bluetooth speaker that it connects to. So when, the, and then there's one on the inside and one on the outside. Like a little sensor thing. Yeah. A little sensor. So the dog can go up when it wants to go out and bop it with its nose or paw or whatever. And the little Bluetooth speaker that's plugged in is like, ding, ding, you know, and you hear it. And then when they want to come back in, same thing. So we've gotten this and she's learned how to do it to go outside. So, but what started being freaky is (laughs) she won't be anywhere near that. And all of a sudden the bell would start going off. And we were like, what is that? And a couple nights ago, Josh, I was like, do not go out there, Graydon. Yeah, because we were in our bedroom and Graydon came in like, it's going off. Because he could hear it. And it was dark out. So he went out there and he took a picture. I wish I would have told him about this. He could have uploaded a picture of this animal because it was a huge raccoon, like an Arnold Schwarzenegger raccoon that we had. I should see if I can find it real quick. So anyway, this is going to take up a lot too much time and I apologize. And if you're listening to this on audio, just fast forward or the replay, just fast forward past this part. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) So. This raccoon, like Josh went out and he came back in. He's like, Christy, there is a huge raccoon and like outside ringing the doorbell. 
And I'm like, it must be doing it by accident or something. So then the next morning, I'm sitting out there with Stella at like 530 in the morning and the doorbell starts going off, right? And so I walk out there, I look, there's nothing there. And so then the doorbell starts going off repeatedly, like ding, 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 ding. So I have to unplug the Bluetooth sen- sensor. So then I come home from work, not last night, but the night before, and we're all sitting on the couch and all of a sudden that outside doorbell goes off <laughs> and you can see, okay, where our back door is, there's a window that comes down. You can see the raccoon just like this. Looking in our house, okay? And if you don't know what I'm doing, that's why I said on the video, you're going to miss out. <laughs> so She's going crazy, baby. <laughs> so you could see the little raccoon eyes peeking, like literally like peeking in the window. And he's just sitting there like staring in the house. Like, are you going to come let me in and feed me food? All this stuff. So Josh oh. got a picture of it, posted on Facebook. And our next door neighbor said, he, we, he said that he had a live trap. So the first night, Josh couldn't leave the trap alone. So the raccoon didn't get in it because we put tuna fish in it. Josh kept going out and turning the light on, having to check on it. And he scared it away. Oh, so <laughs> last night. Untrue. <laughs> uh, yeah. What? Oh, that's a quote from the Godfather. Have you heard that one? No, I haven't, Stacy. actually. Yeah, she said something funny. She was. She says, take the raccoon to the mat. Oh, I have. Yes, to the mattresses. Yes, I've heard that. <laughs> kind of did so so what happened was that so then this morning josh moved the trap last night and this morning josh was trying to go back to sleep now i had him up at now stella had him up at three o'clock normally it's me and he took one for the team last night and allowed me to sleep so anyway he's thinking like oh christy's getting up it's 5 30 i'm taking stella out to the front room i'm gonna get to go back to sleep that's probably what he was thinking in his head so i come out and of course i'm like holding Stella and I'm like I'm gonna go check that cage and so I'm walking around <laughs> I'm walking around outside and he moved and it's this, dark it's dark and he moved this cage I didn't know where it was so where our porch is our deck it to the back of our house there is during a section of it there's a space about this big yeah, about probably two, feet. two feet between the deck and the house where the spigot is for the hose and so I'm walking around. All of a sudden I see that cage down there and that huge sucker is in that cage and he's just staring up at me and his eyes are glowing because I have my flashlight out on my phone mm-hmm. and I'm like looking for this cage and I'm like, oh, and so I run back in the house. I'm like, the raccoon's in the cage. And then he's like, is the door closed? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the door is closed. But anyway, that's what was on my mind. So Josh got to release, you know, we'll get somebody else to release the raccoon back into the wild today. And he sent me a video of the raccoon getting out of the cage and climbing a tree out. So welcome to our life. Yeah. Christy is definitely the girl in the horror movie who always investigates. Right. And she's and Stacy, she's the one always making fun of that person. Right. But is she doing it? Oh, for sure. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Because I'm thinking in my head, I'm going to kill this sucker. No. And I thought I was going back to sleep. I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to get like 20 minutes of sleep. It's going to be glorious. I was so excited. She comes running in the room screaming. And I'm thinking the raccoon grabbed our brand new dog. Oh, that's true. Eating it like a popsicle. Like I'm like for real. Chicken bone. Like almost came out of the way. It was, um, yeah, I'm scared. The living he did. He out said, of me. you scared the crap out of me. And I'm like, oh, sorry. Yes, I was so excited. But the raccoon okay. scared me. It's big. The raccoon was big. Even the guy from our church that took it back to the woods for us, <clears throat> he told Josh, he's like, that raccoon was huge. <laughs> it was huge. So anyway. Yeah. I know. I, I, um, I have other pictures I can show and I should show them, but I, I probably have to show them later because I think if I click on it's going to show something else. Yeah. Look how old that is. Oh my gosh. If you're on here, that's hilarious. Okay. That was from super long time ago. So, but I'm going to slide this over real quick and then so everybody can see it. So, and then that's just fun. Okay. So boom, there it is right there. So that's outside of our back door. I come walking over to our back door and I look across and there is this crazy raccoon. And he's big. He's big. Look so, at how pretty he is. And though. if he stood up, he's over two feet tall if he stands up. So, and he was pretty. He was pretty, but he was pretty big is what he was. And then we got, and I'll show you one more, just one more, one more awesome picture here. 
and then we'll have me... to put it in the description so how many minutes in you can will. fast forward yeah, I will. <laughs> right yeah because this isn't what there you're is. listening yeah i was trying to get a good picture poor baby there he, is. He's scared. he is in the trap he didn't even finish eating the tuna it doesn't look like because he's all scared oh he did he oh did. okay yeah there was the scat to prove it so he uh he was there so there you go okay so there you go that was a raccoon story and this raccoon okay listen people okay we, i know my strengths and weaknesses in this world okay and catching and freeing wild animals no i'll skydive i will get on a stage in front of ten thousand people i don't care but that is not my thing so i had a meeting at the church today for my staff and i was in there and i was looking around i'm like uh i got a raccoon and i'm like i'm not gonna free this thing and one of the guys is like super cool he's like Dude, I'll come to your house and get it and take it. I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. So he did anyway. And he was nice. Let's I, take a let's video get this for proof. Clear. I for would have. Christy would have done it for sure. Yes. She would have hugged it. It would have been just like uh, Alf. Remember the Alf? Like, eee! like he's like, want to hug it. And then an attack her face. No. Right? And these, yeah. No, seriously, like, it was, cr it's crazy. So, and it was hissing and growling. I'm like, I don't even know they did that. <laughs> I'm like, I have boots on up to my knees and I have gloves on and I'm like carrying this cage to the next to the garage this morning. I'm like, this thing's going to figure out a way to get out right now and just end I'm the life. girl that stops and saves turtles out of the middle of the road, Snappers. even if it's a snapper. Yep. yep and yeah. does that. I pick up snakes oh. and I have a couple times and people are like, you're dumb. And I was dumb at the time. Okay. I was super young and I was pregnant, but I saw a huge buck a couple times. I've seen deer get hit by, it. I've only done this once. So a buck, a huge buck got hit by a car and it was still alive and it's laying there like, like dying so and I'm dangerous. pregnant and I walk out to this buck cause I'm going to drag it out of the road because all these other cars are just sitting there, just letting it lay there and we're on F15, it's only two lanes. The buck needs to move. And so I get out of this car and I walk up to it and it's still laying there breathing like dying. So I pet it while it dies. No. Yes. You did not yes. do that. Yes, I did. I'm like, this is. <laughs> yes. This is like okay, a Chris Farley movie. I'm sorry. It was dumb. I'm not saying that was smart. <laughs> We're not even going to have a show today. Like, this is the show. Oh, my gosh. So finally, it. after it died, a, a guy gets out of his truck and he comes looking over. Do you want me to help you pull it out of the road? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm pregnant. And I was pregnant, pregnant. Like, you, it's not like I'm hiding this. Yeah. So then I got home anyway and was oh, telling people that I did that. And people too. were like. That is stupid. Like, it could have kicked you. I'm like, no, I was there. You weren't. The buck was dead, like, basically on its deathbed. Oh. It wasn't going to be kicking me. Oh, man, no. Mm, yeah, no. so. Uh, sorry. I would have helped by running that over again. I'm like, let's finish this thing over. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would have, and then backed up. <laughs> like, yeah, the guy, after we get off the road, he's like, are you going to um come back and get this to take it home for the meet? And I'm like, no. And he's like, okay, because I want to. Um, okay. You, sir, you. <laughs> Dan, the kids, and I have saved a few turtles. Yeah, so Chris said that too. She's like, I still have turtles. I don't want to see them squish. No, I understand. I value that, okay? Yeah, I will I will break for turtles, okay? I break for animals. Like, I'm all yeah. good with that stuff. But I'm not, like, this raccoon, I, people, it's all good and fun and games until you have to approach one, right? Yeah. And even Matt was telling I me today that it. took it. I would have tamed you it. You think you would have. And so Matt even was like, yeah, this thing would have definitely killed your dogs. Like, for sure. It was not friendly, so... Anyway, so that's our fun anyway, little story. 14 minutes in. We'll put that in the description for those that watch the replay. Right. You can fast forward to 14 minutes in. Time stamp the heck out of this bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Raccoons are so stinking cute. No, it is cute, right? We just cannot get away from this. But yeah, uh, we need to move on. It's so stinking cute. It was sticking its little face up to the to the cage and stuff in the back of Matt's truck. And we're sitting there talking and stuff. And all of a sudden, it's like... I'm like, okay, you're not cute. Like, <laughs> I thought you were cute. You are not cute. Yeah. Okay. So let's dive into today, right? So we know that part of something that we've had to figure out along the way in our blended family the last 11 years is something we really had to carve out in the beginning. Yeah. And it was tough. It took us a long time to really find a groove in this, but it's about doing chores and responsibilities. So today's show, we really want to dive in about chores and responsibilities. Blended families, not blended families. It doesn't matter. Like chores and responsibilities and within your family is a staple thing that we all have to have and have to have some type of attention done to it, whether we like it or not. So. And we are not good at it now. So we were good. Yeah, we we're, got no, we're good. No, 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 no. And it saved our family a lot of turmoil um, to mend, you know, to blend and all of that. But we aren't good at it anymore. But our kids don't really fight or anything anymore, so it's no big deal. 
Oh, yeah, so we don't care. So we just we do don't. all the work around the house. And then the kids just hang out. It's fine. It's wonderful. <laughs> they're super entitled. No, they're actually not. And that's, well, I mean, that's a blessing by God, okay? So that means all the work we've put in, that it's worked. And yeah. that's why we want to talk about this today. Right? <laughs> Chores and responsibilities. All right, so let's kick it off with number one. The first thing is you just have to make it fair. Yeah, and so a lot of people, including myself in the beginning, thought that make it fair meant make it equal for everyone. And that is not true. So good. So we started looking up chores that were uh, good depending on what age they were. So Graydon was a couple years younger. And when you're talking about a, you know, eight year old compared to a six year old, it does make a big difference in the chores that they're able to. And it complete. depends on the six year old and the eight year old. Yes. Yes. It does. So we, I, you know, at my job, I Googled like chore appropriate ages and printed it out and brought it home because that's me. And we wanted to talk about that it. You. That is you. <laughs> list maker and stuff like that (laughs) so things stick in my brain when i write on make notes and do things longhand so that's what we did to make it fair and then we talked about like how frequently that needed to happen based on them Mm -hmm. because making it fair for us looked differently than a nuclear family because my kids were with us 90% of the time. They only went to their dads every other weekend. Whereas Josh's kids were gone with their mom like two to three days a week, every week. They were with us four to five days a week, but still every week they were gone for a couple days. And my kids were always there pretty much. I mean, even on the weekends they were supposed to go to their dads, a lot of times they didn't go. So they ended up being with us a lot of the time. So we didn't want my kids to be stuck doing chores like every single day. And Josh's, you know, kids get to leave and then come back and, you know, all the stuff. So that's what making is making it fair. You do need to try to make it as fair as possible, but it may look differently depending on your family and the visitation schedules and the age and how mature the kids are. For their ages. So when Josh and I got together, Mm -hmm. his kids were nine and 14. Mine were eight and six. His kids were much more mature, like far beyond their years because of things that they had been exposed to Mm -hmm. by their mom. So they were a lot more emotionally mature. They had to do it at a quicker rate. And so, yeah, we had to make things fair in that level. Yeah, and I think it's important that we talk about, like, to make it fair means you have to have chores and responsibilities. Oh, that's perfect. I think it's super important that you understand, like, just because you have blended families, it's like, oh, they're dealing with enough. You shouldn't, we shouldn't have them do chores and responsibilities. We shouldn't do, no, it's really important because the one thing that we have to understand about children in general is that they need to be responsible for something to make them feel like they're, they're a part of something and that they have you know, something to be a leader of, like in charge of. And so because of that, now something in the home is part of who they are. And so we we feel it and it's easy to say, oh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to hassle with them or argue with them or fight with them. And in the beginning, it is that like it, you have to figure it out. Like you have to make sure there is chores and responsibilities for everybody within the house, every single person within the house. Now you can do super age appropriate and appropriate per child. And that's why we say make it fair. Make it fair for each kid, appropriate for each kid. And it doesn't mean that it's not fair if one other kid says it's not fair. Right. We have to be very careful on that, that we don't tread into that and say, well, you know, the squeaky wheel kid, right? Let's just say it was my kid, right? Complaining. We had one of those. We did did have one of those. But let's just say it was my kid, right? And he was just complaining all the time, like, they don't ever have to do anything or I have to do everything. That doesn't mean that it's fair or unfair, right? That does not mean, that means that, you know, maybe everything needs to be evaluated and then decided upon and then stuck to, right? When it comes to fairness. And so it's make sure you have chores and responsibilities so you have something to make fair. Well, and Ron Deal would say now that if you have a kid that's saying that you need to sit down with that specific kid and talk through that whole thing. Did did I do what did I do that at the time? No. Negative. Because I'm like, it doesn't matter what you We're just smacking kids. (laughs) We just be smacking them. Like, all you want to do is complain and whine and poor me. It doesn't matter. You still have to do these things. So, but Ron Deal would say you need to sit down and say, why do you think it's not fair? Let's talk about this and try to get them to understand, you know, it from everybody's different perspective. You were, you were really good though about, you know, saying, okay, you know, we'll, we'll sit and talk about it, but no, it's not going to change the outcome of it. Right. And so you were very, very good at that Yeah. where I was good at allowing my kids to have a voice, but I allowed them to have too much of a voice to where 
it really could sway me. And as a parent, that's super easy. If I don't have like I Christy was like in the beginning is like kids get no voice. Yeah. And this is the way that it is. And it I was. was like the kids get a voice and then but that would change the outcome. Kids get all the voice. They get all the voice, right? And instead, yeah. we can say, you know what, Christy and I can talk about it, decide upon it, and then like, okay, we can talk to the kids about it. Okay, your feedback is duly noted, and I understand this is because of her years of management and leadership. Is she's been able to to kind of manage that craft in the secular world, you know, out in the business world, and so that's really helpful within the house, you know. And we were flexible enough with each other yeah. to say, let's come to a common ground on that, which really leads us into the second thing, which I think is super, super important when it comes to children's responsibilities is husband and wife, you have to talk about it first. Mm -hmm. And the person that was really bad about this in our relationship, the worst was Josh. Wow. My <laughs> finger got straight pointed at me. I didn't see that coming. How blinded. It was like getting scared awake this morning from the raccoon story. I was like, yeah, she's going to take responsibility. Nope. <laughs> she's like, it was, <laughs> you know, it was super bad. Josh. It was. And this is, I have many examples that oh I could, no. so he was used to, so, I mean, let's just be honest. Let's be a hundred percent honest with this. So, yeah, and nice. I would not, I would not recommend this. I was married. My divorce wasn't final yet. And I moved in with him. Okay. We are Christian now. Okay. We weren't Christ followers then. We did it wrong in the beginning. All the way so wrong. I still was used to having a person that I needed to d discuss decisions with seriously because or tell about mm -hmm. like with the kids and all this stuff. Josh got sober and was single for years and it was just him and his kids. Yeah. So when his kids came to him about something, he just made the decision. He talked to them about it because they were like roommates and they were all friends and they all talked about it and they all decided what they wanted to do. And then they went on and did it. I feel some sarcasm. <laughs> slight sarcasm <laughs> along with the finger point <laughs> but then sometimes like i would come home and he'd be like oh and josh and jordan were, are very intelligent kids are intelligent so they would wait until i wasn't there and then they because they're they're more comfortable i mean that's not, i'm not yeah, saying that they're that's doing, natural like they're waiting for the step parent to leave because they're more comfortable going up to their biological parents saying hey i really want this this and this you know and then he'd be like okay you know, and uh, I'd come home from work and he'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, I just needed to tell you the blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's because I could justify it then. Right. And that's because I didn't. We. Right. And then she's like, let's be honest. Right. So that's the truth. Like, I could justify it because I'm like, I'm comfortable with the result of that. But the thing is, is I w it wasn't just me and them anymore. It was us. Yeah. And I wasn't taking any of that in consideration because I didn't think it mattered. I was stuck into the same realm as probably Christy was in the beginning, the pointing the finger back at her. It's, we think our way is fine. Yeah. Like, we think our way is the good way. It's the right way, right? We're, number one, we've divorced the problem, right? That's not, I'm not the problem. And the way I'm that a I'm, good parent. In the way that I'm carrying on, right. And I'm a good parent and the way that I parent is good. And, and we were wrong. And so we <sighs> began talking. We have in our bathroom talks, if you've watched any of our episodes before, we've talked about bathroom talks. We began the bathroom talks not about that, but it ended up being that too. And yeah. so that became super important to us is talking about these chores and responsibilities in advance before we start deciding to hand them out. Yeah, because then we were a united front and a lot of times a pro about being instead of a con about being in a blended family is I do think sometimes bio parents have rose colored glasses when sure. it comes to their own children. Definitely. So like you see, you know, nuclear family are out and the kids are like little Tasmanian devils, like running around and they're just like, Oh, we just like kids be kids, you know, or they just continue <laughs> to yell at them and stuff. And you're like, you don't understand what a terror your kid is. Like you don't really see them for what they actually are. Like they need a good whooping <laughs> is what they need. Yeah. And so a pro about being in a blended family is if we were having these talks, he wasn't coming at it from a bio parent standpoint. So he's like, well, your kids are probably going to say blah, blah, blah. Yep. And then, yep. and I could be like, well, your kids are going to say blah, blah, blah. And this is what I think about that. And then he'd say, well, this is what I, so then we were able to kind of not 
foresee everything, but we could decide together what we were going to do. Like if one of my kids are, was going to bring up, if he's like, when your kids are going to bring this up, what are you going to say? And then I would make me have to think about it because of course I want to cater to them because there is guilt too about being an definitely. abundant family. Yeah, so if they come up and think like, oh, you love the new family, you love your new spouse more than me, that like breaks your heart mm -hmm. and so then you instantly want to show them no i love you the most mm. you know like you nothing will ever replace you you're my child yeah, you want to defend them yes and so it helps get through all of that by talking it through first and being honest it's not talking it through like what are we going to do oh we both feel this way great and then you go out in front of the kids and the kids start throwing all of this guilt mud at you mm -hmm. and you weren't prepared for it and then you two potentially could end up fighting and arguing in front of the kids but you would because you're trying to defend your kids then because yep. you guys weren't anticipating the things that the kids were going to bring up yeah and these so. are early on things right we think we have to not just mama bear, like I was daddy bear, like, oh. I, we, right? We wanted to like protect our kids at all costs, right? I can't even today, I I can't joke with Christy and say, oh, my son's a perfect kid. Mm -hmm. Because, right, because it's it's become a thing that we've had to really work hard at and control to make sure that it's not, things aren't treated that way. And it's been right. hard work. It's hard to do. It really is. And it's not that one of our kids is better than the other. All of no. our kids are different. Yeah. And they have such amazing traits in all different ways. And that's really hard to see it that way when all you're doing is looking at your child and defending your child. So yeah. when we talk about like, you know, talking with your spouse first, it's in a humble way. It's in a, a growth desire. It's in a desire to make sure that your family grows together and have that same heart for that and say, look, we want to come to the same result here. Maybe I don't agree with you, but maybe you don't agree with me. Okay. But how can we work through this? We want mm -hmm. to stay on this path to love each other, to stay true to it. And then we can decide on something and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Let's go out now to the children and let's deliver this message to them about the chores and the responsibilities together. Yeah. So we're both considered the bad guy or good guy, no matter what the message is. And that's the way it's supposed to well, be. Well, and the end of the meeting is like, we love you. And it always like should be. Our job as yeah. parents is to raise you well and to teach you how to be a good human being yep. and responsible human being and to take responsibility and to love God and to know that God loves you and all this stuff. So really quick, just so you guys know, if you've never watched our podcast before, we do have four kids and Josh has two. Jordan, she's a girl and I know that can be a boy or a girl. So Jordan and- 25. She's 25. And then little Josh, we call him. He's 20. And then my oldest is Garrett, and he's going to be 20 April. in April. And then my youngest, Graydon, who just turned 18 in January. And the thing about our kids is if you notice the oldest, Jordan, she's the only girl. She is extremely outspoken. She is very, very motherly. She has a she very is. protective thing about her because of how i mean she basically raised her younger siblings they her and little josh have another sibling isaiah um that their mom had with someone else so jordan is very very protective and she's the only girl and girls are different than guys to begin with especially so, the oldest girl yeah yeah so she was different from the other three just purely because she's a girl not not to mention she's outgoing and she's you know very she her likes will. to she used to come to us and say, hey, can so-and-so move in with us because they have a bad home life, right? Yeah. Like, she's just like that. And then little Josh is very, I like to call him stoic because he's very, very stoic. He has a great personality if you get to know him. Yeah. If you didn't know him, you would think he doesn't speak. Like, he he <laughs> won't talk to you or really... He doesn't feel the need to. He's he's very confident in the need of that. He's not worrying about like, is this person thinking I'm rude or not rude because I'm not talking to them? No, he's just not talking, yeah. you know, to you. But once you get to know him, he's very confident in his decisions. He he knows what he wants and he goes after it. And it doesn't matter what opinion, who it's coming from, or True. what, he's not gonna budge. Yeah. And then my oldest son, Garrett, is his superpower, he's extremely social. Like you could drop him anywhere yeah, and he would figure it out. He would survive anywhere, anywhere. And he could walk into a room and start talking to people and the people it's like, he's known them forever. Mm -hmm. Like he, he gets and he's engaging and all this stuff. It's great. And then Graydon is very quiet, but if you get to know him, he 
is extremely good at drawing. He's extremely good at music. And he is a lover of all things living. He is highly, highly um, attracted to loving on and caring for things that are hard to be cared for. Yes. And all things living. Like yeah. people, he doesn't he doesn't say a cross word about anybody nope, or anything never. an animal that is super super difficult he has undying patience you know to it's just they all have they're all so different and yeah. they all have such amazing strengths to see that balancing it when it came to especially being in a blended family too uh a lot of strong strong personalities just because a person's quiet doesn't mean that they don't have a huge stubborn toot that can get thrown around. And every single person in True. our family, there were six of us, all had great, big, stubborn mm. personalities. Mm, just like us. That's what I'm saying. It was six of us. Yeah, just we don't like have us. six kids. No, I know, but I'm saying they're just like us. Yeah. They are just like us. So coming together, knowing where we were going to be standing and stuff, it, it's very important to be a united front, especially when you have four kids looking at you like... I'm digging my heels in and you know what I do and I won't. They don't say that, but that's how they that's are. Their actions do though. Yeah. So talking about it first was super, super important for us specifically because we don't have kids that are just like, okay. No. And you have to understand, like we allowed our kids to be who they are. Right. So Garrett, uh, you know, was the kid that just, he was a social butterfly and school wasn't his thing, right? He, he, he just needed to get through school. Yeah. Right. It didn't have anything about he being a six, it. being a successful person. Garrett has some of the most amazing work ethic. Amazing. Right. So we really knew like, okay, Garrett college isn't for you. And we're okay with that, buddy. Like it's just fine. Yeah. Like we're going to encourage you to go and be a professional at something, but it doesn't have to be college. And so directly out of high school, we hooked him up with a really good friend of ours and uh, that that runs a company that has uh, that one of the companies that he runs is electrical. And Garrett now is six months into his apprenticeship to become an electrician and is doing outstanding. He's yeah, he still had to apply. And he did, but and but he stuff. but he went after it. Yeah. Right. He, we didn't have to second guess him or question him or make him. It was just like we've even read that. Josh is like, hey, I am a college person. That's what I want to do. I want to go into business. And so, you know, he's away at college and that's what his thing is. Right. And he goes and he does it. And he's responsible enough to do it. Graydon is, you know, coming into his own with all of his creativity and stuff. It's like we want to encourage him to do what he wants to do. And so I think it's important that we understand that when we go behind closed doors and we're talking about these chores and responsibilities about our kids is understand that everybody is individual and they all have their own strengths. And that matters. Uh, when we're talking with our other with our spouse about their kids, mm -hmm. it's important. Mm -hmm. Important. Okay. And the last point, the very last point, today, is you need to create a chore chart. I know. I'm so sad that he saved this for the last point, only because I almost had it slip out of my mouth so many times. I have a really cool thing to show everybody too. So. And I had to be, bite my tongue. I'd be like, oh. And then I'd have to try to redirect on the fly to go to something else. Yeah. Because the chore chart was such a amazing like, it's like pinnacle. easter egg <laughs> in the blended family it really was it was and it's like the great white buffalo and you don't want to talk about it okay i gotta show it so i love you tell everybody about this picture at the bottom little josh isn't even in that picture I, well it's the picture we have though that's okay oh my gosh it's so cute look at garrett <laughs> <laughs> Garrett has the blue shirt on. So actually the little one that's in the back, he lived with us for a little bit. That's Isaiah. That is um, Josh, Josh little Josh and Jordan's younger brother. Yep. Um, so he lived with us a little bit. And can you imagine? So we lived in a three bedroom apartment. Josh and I actually have one bedroom, obviously. Jordan being the only girl mm -hmm. and being six years older had her own bedroom. Yep. So we had four boys yeah. in one room. So that was interesting. But they have dart guns and josh and i had to be that was our bedroom so josh and i had so to be cute. confined in our bedroom a lot because we it was this apartment so there was only two tvs in the house one was out in the living room and one was in our bedroom yeah. well the one out in the living room was always taken up with these boys playing 
video games. And then on either side of it, we had two computers. So typically there was, and then we had a laptop for when, when Isaiah was there. So if you walked out there, there would be one on a laptop, yeah. one on a computer, another one on a computer, and one playing video games. All playing together. It, all playing together. Yeah, playing yeah. together in the same game. Yeah. yeah. So we were in our bedroom. So then they'd come running in our bedroom and do funky stuff like that to show us things. Okay, tell, tell everybody why I showed the picture then. Oh, because in the back <laughs> over there in the hall, that is where, that's our chore chart. Yeah, you can see it. That's I, We tried to find good pictures of them. And believe it or not, we never thought, which is weird for me because I am a picture holic. Yeah. I uh, never took a picture just of the chore board. So I had yeah. to go through Facebook and I have a lot of pictures on Facebook yeah. and find, I'm like, there's got to be, I take so many pictures. There has to be pictures with this chore board in the background or something. Yeah. And I found some, we have some even in the trailer. So within the first six months, we only lived in our first trailer we moved into for six months. In the trailer, we had this chore board up, and Josh had forgotten. So I, being determined and stubborn, like we talked about earlier, yeah. knew I had to have pictures somewhere, and I found pictures of us in the trailer with the chore board in the background. So the chore board actually was a quick fix that we found, and it worked yeah. really well. So the proof is that we started using it, and we actually started using it a couple years before this because we went from yeah. living in a trailer to living in the apartment to living in the house that we're in now. So. Yeah. It's kind of followed us through and it made it here for a short period of time. Very, we very really short. need it because no. we had already found a groove with it. This yep. is the point, right? So kind of recreating, not 100% accurate, but it has a, the same concept Because they idea. couldn't remember exactly. Yeah, I couldn't remember because we didn't have any proof of it. And Christy found these, these pictures. But so we hung it in an area that was up for everybody to see, right? And we did this even whole- Even guests. Even guests. <laughs> yes. And it's intentional, right? So we did the whole green light, yellow light, red light. And so it acted as a chore chart, but in all reality, it was really a punishment board too, uh, kind of sugarcoated around. So you can see on the picture on the right side of the screen, we have the different lights and we had kids that all start at the beginning of the week that started on green, right? And once they did something and some type of infraction or some type of something that Christy and I decided were something that was not okay, that they were, any of them could get in trouble for, that they had to purposely go and they had to write themselves into the yellow light, right? So first warning. That was a warning, which I agree. Like I told him, I'm like, there has to be a warning. Has so to be a warning. Yep. I agree. I don't agree with not being a warning. And so we would put them on warning, right? And then the next, whatever it is that they did wrong, right? Whatever it's back talk or hit somebody. It didn't have to be the same thing. No, it could be anything. Yeah, in the week. And then they would move on to red light. Red light means they had to pick something from the red zone, right? The bad zone, like you're now in the red. And so you can see in the bottom corner there, it's like, you know, picking up dog poop. It was something, you know, cleaning writing toilets sentences. and writing sentences. And we've had to pick something that, was painful enough for everybody and writing sentences just was it. You'd think it was picking up dog poop, it wasn't. It was writing these dang sentences, man. Ooh, man. they hated it. Yeah. But it worked, right? And so as soon as they went to red and they did their dog poop, write sentences, whatever, they would go back to green for the end of the week. And it would reset each week. But also you can see on the board, we had X's on days when my kids weren't there, right? So Jordan and Josh were not there on Mondays and Tuesdays. And then we filled in all the other days with chores. These are different chores. The chores are different than kind of the red zone yeah. where the kids go. It's completely different. Separate. Yeah, we combined it. it yeah, so, like... so we combined it into one board, one full action board. And you can see how we kept it fair. And then the weekends we kept off. There was no chores or responsibilities in the weekend. It was free, you know, free time and just to hang out and stuff. So, and it just really, really worked out. Like the kids would be like, have tears in their eyes, having to go up there and move themselves from green to yellow yellow to red but they understood they understood the rules and it wasn't like it was up from to big josh or to christy to decide on like hmm did you really do this or should you be in trouble like it was pretty simple because christy yeah. and i talked about all of this before we even created the board and then we presented it to him yeah and our kids didn't really back talk a lot and this helped keep it down because josh's kids would want to talk things out which meant give their opinion a lot and talk themselves out of and yeah, talk themselves out of it. Yeah, and then <clears throat> Garrett does that. Garrett would do that too. Yeah. Uh, Greedon would just be like, you know, and go do it. But this helped save a lot of that. Like, no, if you want to talk about it, like how you don't think it's fair and everything, that's fine. But eventually, they just stopped because we were like, no, you you agree. They they would know. They nope. would do something and they'd be like, yeah, no. I'd be like, go move yourself because yeah. Yeah. now we made them move, made them do it. 
Yeah. And then when we had moved into the apartment, because granted the trailer, we were only there for six months. We moved into the apartment. Every once in a while, someone would do something that they were not allowed to pick a chore or I mean a punishment off of the board. It was you're grounded. Yeah. Or you can sit down and write 500 sentences right now. Like yeah. type of thing. But that was rare. It was like a double whammy. Yeah. You know, we kind of talked like, you know, two reds in one week, like it's big trouble. And then, you know, we talked about like, you know, giving the kids that didn't get in trouble that week, you know, something like an ice cream, you know, things of that nature. Like we just worked on it as and let it develop as we went throughout our relationship until it got to like, everybody knows that you're not supposed to do this. It's not Josh's kids aren't supposed to do this or Chrissy's kids aren't supposed to do this. It's simple. We, we, her and I agreed, like none of them are allowed to do this or this or this. or this. These are the, these are the no, no things. And it was easy. And it was because it was, they were kids still too. I mean, they were 14, nine, eight and six when we got together. So this had a visual for them. So a lot of times yeah. it took away the, well, it's not fair. Like we didn't hear that hardly at no, all. No, we heard it a lot before. Yes. And then this got up and in the beginning they did not like it. But it was never this not fair. Yeah. Because yeah. it just, it's the And then same we were in the apartment for three years. So we moved in here and it was up for a very short time and we just didn't, didn't need even, it anymore. Didn't even have the need to do it anymore. Like mm -hmm. we would be like, you're going to get in trouble. They'd be like, yeah, I know. What do you want to do? And they would just do it. And then that was it. Like there was no need to have the board or anything else. Mm -hmm. So no, and for Jordan, because she was much older, hers just pretty much. Her name needed to be up there for fairness, right? We go right back to point two. Like, it's got to look fair for everybody, no matter what the age is. But it's, Jordan was responsible. But Jordan was responsible, but Jordan was on the board, right? Yeah. Jordan was still on there. And then Jordan had responsibilities on the board, right? So there were still chores that she had to do at the house, right? She had the the kids' bathroom, right? Because there was two, two bathrooms in this. It was a big apartment. I mean, it was like 1,600 square feet. But there was two bathrooms in this apartment. And they had, we had our we had our own bathroom in our bedroom and then they had like the kids bathroom and she like cleaned that. That was yeah. like her thing was like cleaning that bathroom. But the point is, is we had it to where it felt fair, even though, you know, we didn't have to worry about her getting moved from green, yellow and red. She never did. Mm -mm. I mean, it's just not how it was. No. So, but we did that to keep it fair, but that's just kind of gives you an example of like how creative we had to get. We were forced to get that. We didn't just say, Oh, this is just the way things are. We were like chores and responsibilities are not going away. They are part of who we are. They're part of our family. And we want to make sure that our family has some type of order. So, you know, as a way of review, you know, you need to make it fair, make it fair for everybody. You need to make sure that you talk about it first with your spouse before you start handing out chores and responsibilities. Because what you did before in your past relationships or before you got in this relationship is out the window now. It all has to be rehashed and redecided upon and then hand it out to your kids and then mm -hmm. make sure you set, you know, create some type of chore chart, some type of punishment board. So everybody understands where they're at because kids need to know they need to know they it can't be just, I'm upset today because I had a bad day at work and you're getting on my nerves. So you're getting in trouble for this. It can't be that. Yeah. There's got to be some stability to it. I agree. Yeah. And it worked really well. It did. It worked really well. Chores and responsibilities. So I want to thank you so much for being here. Do you have anything else you want to add before we're done? No, we're almost out of the season. Just for any of you that don't know, you're not normally watching our podcast, but um, we're getting ready to have our first grandchild in May. So we're almost out of the season of kids and all of that stuff. Little ones, yeah. And like I said before, the kids now really don't do anything around the house. We do it all. Yeah. This is why though it's such an opportunity for us to share what we have been through to with people that are going through. I mm -hmm. mean, everybody's situation is different, but there's so much light that we can shine because we yeah. worked so hard in so many ways it was so hard to make it work that, you know, all we want to do is be able to just light the path for somebody else that's struggling in these areas, you know? That's the whole point and purpose of why we've even began doing this is because not everyone has to struggle for seven, eight, nine, ten years. You know, there is ways that you can learn from others. And or let, and just to talk about the the issues that or the things that blended families have to deal with, because there isn't a lot that's talked about with blended families. And it's like, yeah, true. we all just sit like when we first got teens, you know, we first were getting teenagers, all three boys at the same time being teenagers. I'm like, where? 
is all the support groups for women with teenagers. There isn't any. There's all these joyful moms at our church and all this joyful mom group and all this stuff. All these people for all the toddlers and babies and supporting one another. The moms that have teenagers need support. It's the same thing with blended families. Like, we just feel like when you're in a blended family, you know, like you're dealing with all this stuff and it's just like, oh, I guess just just what we deal with. Suffer through it's it. Just, because a lot of people aren't talking about what they are going through or what they're dealing with at home. So you start talking about it and people are like, or they laugh about it. Like, yes, I have to deal with that too. Or like all of this stuff. And it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, you do. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the problems. There's lots of marriage support groups and every marriage has issues. Then you throw a blended family into that marriage too. Mm. That's why the divorce rate is higher for blended second, third, fourth marriages if there's kids involved because it's it's harder. It's even harder than a nuclear family. And people were just not talking about it enough. So no, Josh and I wanted yeah. yeah, Josh and I wanted to open up a platform and we'll be the first ones to get criticized or said that we're that's not true or we're you're stupid or you're amazing and you know, thank yep. you or whatever. We don't care. Like we just know that there is things that need to get talked about and to bring awareness to us and have fun with it. Like, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> like, let's just talk about it. Honestly. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's be transparent. You know, yeah. we want to be open and transparent. It's something that, you know, through our recovery. Yeah. Through our recovery though, we've learned how important transparency is. And so, you know, nobody wants to walk into a church and say, Hey, I've recently been divorced and I've been remarried. I was living with this lady before I got married. And, uh, you know, let's talk about it. Like, no, people are not doing that. Right. People just aren't. So we need to make sure that we're raising the flag and saying, Hey, you know what? We're here. If you need to talk to somebody, you need some coaching to go through this in life. We get it. We understand. And so we want to make sure that we're part of that. I still hesitate. Okay. So people that know us now, Josh and I try (laughs) to be Christ followers and to do what God would want us to do in every situation. Are we perfect at it? No, we're not. Christy is. Oh my gosh. But I still hesitate to tell people like, I wasn't even divorced. My divorce wasn't finalized. So you're whispering now. I know. Because I don't know. (laughs) I'm just embarrassed about it. Because it's just wrong. Well, and the last thing you want to do is, okay, at a, as a boss, like I used to have a boss that didn't tell us when he took the day off. Okay. Because he would still answer the phone, do all the stuff, but he like didn't want us to know he wasn't working. Yeah. And the reason why is because bosses are like, if they know I took a day off, then people will think it's okay that they take a day off. Right. Or they'll assume that I take a day off a week and then they'll start calling off. That's what they think. And I don't want, the last thing I want is for someone to see us now. And then give themselves the excuse to do something that God wouldn't want them to do. And God wouldn't want you to not even be, first off, God doesn't want you to get a divorce. So let's start there. But your divorce isn't even finalized and you're moving in with someone else. God would not want you to do that. So the reason why Josh and I relationship is so good now is because it was very, very hard in the beginning but we've committed everything to God. We we changed everything. We put right everything that we needed to put right and did it. So it's like that verse in the Bible that says the great, you know, there's unending grace. So does that mean we should just sin, 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 because God will keep forgiving us? No, we should want to do what God wants us to do. So that's why I hesitate because people, I don't want people to be like, oh, see, and they turned out fine. That's why it's so hard. This is why exactly what she's saying, though, is the reason why it doesn't get talked about in church. Exactly. It's, it's the truth because it's the fear of bringing glory yeah. to, to the bad things. Yeah. And we cannot live in that fear. No. If we speak from our heart and make sure that we're confidently talking about the things, like Christy said, we did it and it was not right. And God doesn't want us to do that. Mm-hmm. God does not approve of divorce. God does not want you living together out of marriage. Like, to make sure that we talk about those things, but not shy away from discussing it, right? then it doesn't get talked about. And that's why the church today does not talk about these things. Yeah. Because of the fear of God. Yeah. I remember when we first started Celebrate Recovery, I know we're kind of running into this, but when oh, yeah. I first started Celebrate Recovery, I had a friend of mine says, hey, I'm going to come and support you and stuff. And then afterwards he was like, because I was sharing my testimony, it was like one of the first weeks that we were open when we started. And he was like, Oh yeah, man. It sounds like you just talked about all the stuff you used to do, man. It sounds like you're just bringing glory to all that. And I'm like, it's just not true. Like it's, it's the mindset of the way that the church has trained us and thinking that we, 
because this has happened before, we need to make sure that we don't talk about it anymore. Well, we can't relate to people if we don't talk about it. It's how we talk about it. And we can't give God the glory, though, for what was overcame. Right. And we have to talk about it to discuss those things. So it's there's a balance in that. I do understand that. And we respect that. But that's why it's important, even if you have to whisper it at times, to still talk about well, it. Well, because what's the other we side? To. What's the other side, though? The other side is, which I don't want to be, is people com- what do people complain about about people in church and Christians is, oh, they have it all together. They never yeah. admit, they can't admit when anything's going wrong because they have to appear like they have everything together. And so it's like, we don't want that either. Like, I don't want to appear I have everything together. I definitely don't want to be proud of the things that I've done wrong. Like, it's a good thing. Sure. But I also don't want to appear that I, I have everything together. I struggle. What's what we do with that struggle, you know, individually? Are mm-hmm. we taking responsibility? Are we repenting? Are we putting things in place to not do it again? Are we above you reproached know? now? Yeah. So... Yeah, it's it's we ha- it's hard to remain balanced. Yeah, it is hard, and that's why you don't hear too much about people doing blended family ministries. You just don't. You're no. not going to hear much of it, and it's sad to us because I would have never raised my hand in the beginning ever. We would suffer in silence, right? And it was just how it was. I'm not going to run up and tell everybody that I've been divorced. Like, no way. Still don't hear about it. I brought it up in a meeting today at church. You know, and I'm uh, pastors going around asking everybody, like, you know, what what. If, if you had to say one word that described our church, what would that word be? And, uh, you know, I, I said accepting was mine. And I'm like, I'm the only person on staff right now that's ever had an open uh, relationship with some type of substance, Chemical dependency. right? Some type of dependency. And I've been divorced and I'm on staff here. And that takes a lot of acceptance because that's a very hard thing for the church to accept because they don't want to glorify it. So it's just really, really difficult within the church world. We have well, to make sure that we're speaking up about these things. At the one of the conferences we went to, what they said, it's a high need, low demand. Yep. And so we are just trying to fill what, from a blended family perspective, a need. That only, it still helps us. Talking about these things helps us. That's why going to celebrate recovery, even though you're sober, continues to help you. Because it holds you accountable, you know, to things. So Yeah, it gets frustrating because this can be very thankless and that's very difficult. But I think ministry in general, that's the way God's designed it, right? He does the heavy lifting. We just have to stay faithful. And I think that's Mm -hmm. really what it's all about. So thank you so much for being here. That was kind of a side tangent thing, but I think it's important that we do talk about that Soapbox. Soap, soap. All right. All right. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you guys next week, next Tuesday at 7. Bye.